I think I read that you said you like playing characters that are outsiders. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, I think it's an interesting perspective to work with. I mean, outsiders is a broad term, so that could mean a lot. But uh, I like playing characters that, that, that challenge people's perceptions because I, I think we live in a world where so much of our perception is, is given to it for us, is given, is given to us by other people. You know, it's such a cliche, hipster thing to say, but it's true that, uh, you know, we're, we're exposed to commercials all the time and, and uh, social media posts, and we tend to surround our, our friend list on social media with people who agree with us and, and you know, uh, uh, all the, a lot of the movies we watch are made by the same people and controlled by the same companies, and uh, they follow trends. And we're just we're just exposed to so much media portraying a certain lifestyle. And you can, and in today's age, you can choose to surround yourself with media that that reflects what you find comfortable. And that I think it's uh, it's very easy to become very locked in what you believe. And so I really like playing outsiders because I think it, it challenges people's perceptions on what what is normal or what what life oh god what life means that's such a no no I, I there's a there's a gentleman that wrote a book I think in the 50s about the notion of the outsider um, and and other people's big people's perceptions the fear some people have of, of the outsider and, and the fascination and also the loneliness and isolation of that outsider. And I forgive me, I, I, the name of the book and the writer is escaping me. But um, I think it's a fascinating thing, especially now because we're kind of afraid of anything that's different and we're taught to fear it. Who, who are some of your favorite outsider characters and why? Why do you like uh, those characters? Well, you know, there's Travis Bickle, of course, I think the ultimate outsider movie character uh, like not a good man by most definitions but I find him interesting because it's easy to just say oh he's just a crazy guy but you know it's like he I think that that character is a reflection of a society that produced him you know it's like imagine that you live in that city at that time and you're in this car and you're just separated from the city by glass and metal and you're driving passing, and we talked about, you know, the pimps and the hustlers and all these different people. And, uh, you know, I think about the people getting into his cab late at night, you know, like, like businessmen cheating on their wives with, with different girls. Or like, you know, there's that one character who's the opposite. It's the husband trying to find his wife, and he says, I'm going to shoot her in the face, in the, well, he says pussy, I'm going to shoot her in the pussy with a 44 Magnum pistol. And, uh, you know, he lives in this right little apartment by himself in this swarming hive of people. And, uh, and uh, you know, he doesn't have a lot of money. So he, he uh, you know, he goes to like those pornographic movie houses and, uh, you know, he takes that girl to that pornographic movie house. And it's sad because I think he actually, in his mind, thought it was a good idea for a date. I think, because I like how it doesn't really tell you a lot about his past. He says he's a Vietnam vet. Mm -hmm. Some people wonder whether he is... Uh, the screenwriter uh, says that he is. Yeah, I, and I think it's easy to just uh, look at him as this crazy person, but you gotta ask, like, am, am I just a few steps away from being Travis Bickle? Like, what if I was put alone in an apartment in a ratty part of town for that amount of time, and right. if I was just cut off from people, and uh, if I'd seen what he'd seen? And so is it is it fascinating to see someone that the the masses would say they're weird or they're bad, but if you really well, he is bad. I'm not saying he's not sure, bad. Sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> but but maybe there's others in varying degrees. Where if you sort of looked at the timeline of their life, you could see why they got to that point and maybe have more empathy. But instead, most people put up the shield of fear, and and you're more fascinated by peeling back those layers. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like. Uh... I am, and not just that type of outsider, different outsiders too, but I guess I'm the type of guy who, let's say if someone gets bitten by a rabid dog, most people tend to feel bad for the guy, and I, I feel bad for the guy too, don't get me wrong, but I also tend to feel bad for the rabid dog, because there, there, there are very few genuine sociopaths in the world, like people who are just born with no 
morality whatsoever, you know, and I, I think it's, it's hard to, because uh, I, I think, you know, I'm not, I wouldn't go as far as to say that I'm a biological determinist. I wouldn't go that far, but I think at the end of the day, we are physical systems where we're a collection of cells. And like, if I, if I touch like a hot poker, that is a bunch of molecules and energies that sends a reaction to these physical cells. You know, this whole universe we live in is a physical universe that's full of actions and reactions. And, you know, we are animals. And I think people don't like being told that they're animals because it ruins their kind of illusions of being this effervescent spirit that's in complete control of their life. You know, like, uh, I am an individual and I control my destiny. And like you do, <laughs> I don't think you can control your destiny nearly as, as well unless you're very aware of your base kind of cognitive biases and your base instincts, you know, like, uh, and I think depending on the physical environment that you're in, you know, people react to that. So I think it, it, we got to be aware of this and, and really be aware of like the, the type of media we consume or the type of message that we're sending. And, uh, and I just think that's the only way that we can really make people change or is if we're aware of what created them, you know, because I think people like to treat these people like bogeymen. Like it's easy to treat a, a suicide bomber like just some crazy person who hates people. And yeah, maybe he hates people and he's a bad guy. He's a bad guy. But a lot, but, may, but you know, you got to look back and if this many people are, uh, are creating these actions and doing what they do that, that are willing to give up their lives, what they believe is a cause, obviously something has put them into a rather desperate position so we got to examine what caused that situation in the first place, rather than just treating it like a, like a thing, like something that can be, like we treat evil like it's just this thing that can be killed. We can just make it go away by killing it. Sure. Rather than changing the circumstances that bring it about. Do you think people can write a script for their own life and, and become, and this is such like a cliche, but do we determine our own fate? And, and in doing that, can you somehow relate it to acting? I think we can if, if you try to make yourself aware. Like really study, you know, study all sorts of different areas. Uh, you know, study psychology, but then again, study the different branches and, and, and see the different ideas, but not just psychology or, or like you know, study history too. see what people have done and see what the results of that were and see the different perspectives, not just one. Uh, and again, I think just be aware of the fact that you are a, a, lit, a creature, you know, that uh, is, is given certain instincts by what you were exposed to. And I just think question yourself, you know, I mean, be confident in yourself, but question yourself and I think in the way that that relates to acting you always got to be perfectly aware of the physical reality of your character I, I don't think that necessarily means like what's your character's favorite color or like you know what was your character's mom like but if it's in the script like if they live in a house and it says their house is like this well what does that say about them you know like if they if it if they if they go to if they're like a construction worker well what are the physical realities of being a construction worker you know, and how does that relate to what the point of the story is? You know, like, because the writer chose that for a reason to make them a construction worker. So how does that relate to the point that they're trying to make? Mm 